Hi guys, I wanted to show you how to build one of my favourite bandsaw jigs. Now this is a low angle taper cutting jig and it allows you to cut significantly lower angles than a traditional mitre would allow you to. You can cut tapers almost entirely to nothing on this. It's incredibly versatile, it's very safe and it's dead easy to build. So let's do it. You don't need much to build it at all. I've got some hardwood offcuts, a couple of bits of beech wood, I'm not even sure that's probably beech as well. I've got some of the drop in rail nuts for this. Now, this is 2060 extrusion, which is commonly found on 3D printers, small CNC machines. A rail nut that's going to go into the fence on the bandsaw. But this extrusion itself is fantastic because it's incredibly rigid. Um, nice and light it's not too expensive either and of course because you've got the slots all the way through it you've got a huge amount of mounting options well, this wasn't even that expensive i think a meter of this is about 15 quid so it certainly worth paying out i i would rather use the aluminium than hardwood or plywood especially in the shed here where i can't accurately control the temperature and humidity in here this is going to stay nice and straight for a long time whereas even with sort of man-made boards there's a good chance that it'll end up warping eventually in here so quite straightforward i'll show you how to mark up this piece at the end here now this is the most important bit this is basically going to have lots of little steps on here which will allow us to angle the workpiece the aluminium extrusion will always follow the same line as the fence and therefore the blade of the bandsaw so by angling the workpiece across this it means we can put them tapered cuts in now this is a tiny little bandsaw in the shed it's only and it's got very small infeed as well but we can have a much longer rail if you wanted to and that's what this is for i'm going to make the fixing just to support this on the fence so even if we've got an item that's a meter long for instance we can easily feed that through the tiny little bandsaw so I'm basically marking four mil spaces, one, two, three, four. Right, so I've marked four mil spacings across there. Now the important part is that when I cut these out, that I don't just cut them as square steps, I want to cut them back at a slight angle. So when you've put your tapered piece of wood in there, there's not an edge that can push it out. this is what we're going to cut off so I'll rip that off quick and then I'll cut all of this out of there Right, I'm going to go and drill two 8mm holes down there and then add some counter bores to the top of those. Right, two holes, two counter bores. Just true that up before tightening it. That's the basic part of it done. Now you could actually use it like this already just for cutting tapers, but what I will do, I'm gonna make another little taper for the other end of it, this end, so that if I fall between a step at the angle that I need, then I can just adjust the taper this end by bringing it back or forth under the workpiece just to fine tune that angle a bit. 
Right, get the taper. Right, that is basically it. That can be used exactly like this now and you can adjust the angle of your workpiece. I'll show you, it's easier. Right, so I've got a scrap of walnut here. If, for instance, I wanted to cut out <laughs> So I want to cut out that long, thin taper off of there. All I need to do is find my closest step, which is probably that one. If I go up one more, to do is take a reference measurement from the back edge of here 59 and a half so that needs to come up a bit more let's try the next step there 59 and a half and that needs to come up just a tiny bit So again, reference measurement off the back of the fence. Right, that'd be close enough. Now I can literally run that through the bandsaw, just like that, I'll show you. Right, so all I need to do is set my fence at that reference measurement that I took, which was 59 and a half. So all I need to do now is just put light pressure on the back of the taper jig, light pressure on the side here and that will run through and with this tapered line running parallel to the fence and the taper jig, it'll cut that out lovely. Dead on the line. Now what I am going to do is make a little guide for my fence here that sits over the top. So when I get to the extremes of the feed, it won't catch and drop off the side. So I'm gonna do that now. It's going to sit on there. I'm going to drill a hole down through the top there for the rail bolt. I've got a nice little radius edge on here already, and I'll just give these edges a sand, and that will support the taper jig. Right now, with the little stop on there, when I make the extremes of extension on the taper jig, it can't go anywhere. How's that for a taper then? <laughs> it's almost like a fishing rod. What it's also incredibly useful for is if you actually need to reference a straight edge. If you've already got a piece of wood that's got quite a bow to it or a badly cut edge already, by supporting it at either end, you can have the wavy cut under here and you can rip it off and then you can establish a straight edge so it's super useful not just for cutting tapers but also for truing up wonky wood anything any off cuts and the likes it was absolutely fantastic for that so when i say it's probably my most useful gadget that i've got in here i'm really not kidding i use this so regularly for 
sort of hamster kits, truing up tapers for all manner of things really, packing wedges, anything you can really think of, anything that you can't quite get into with a traditional mitre square when you need to work at much lower angles, something like this is absolutely worth the time to build.